tonight on Connecticut's news station, a boost from sports in the capital city. Those guys just did us so proud, and uh, for a brief and shining moment, everybody was talking about Connecticut. UConn's fifth national title and the start of the Yard Goat season expected to bring excitement to downtown Hartford this weekend. Temperatures are moving on up. Check out the warmth tomorrow. We're also timing out the chance for a shower or storm. Also, new video tonight shows the moment police say a state representative was driving drunk and flipped her car right near the state capitol. And concerns tonight about rising anti-Semitism. I don't feel hurt by this. I feel emboldened by it. As Jewish communities celebrate the first night of Passover, we're looking at the growing problem of anti-Semitic incidents in Connecticut. Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And we begin tonight with the capital city preparing for a very busy weekend fit for champions. Good evening, I'm Jen Bernstein. And I'm Ben Goldman. Thanks for joining us here. Hartford getting ready to welcome people from all over the state for the next few days. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow's opening day for the Hartford Yard Goats, and the city's hosting UConn's National Championship Parade Saturday. Here's a look at the parade route for the Huskies to celebrate their fifth national title in men's basketball. It starts at the state capitol, winds through Bushnell Park, and goes up Trumbull Street before ending outside of the XL Center. And that's where we find Fox 61's Gabby Molina joining us live tonight to tell us all about the excitement coming to downtown Hartford. Gabby. Yeah, Ben and Jen, there is a lot of fun things to look forward to this weekend, and it all starts tomorrow with the Yard Goats home opener. Then the Yard Goats will play again on Friday and Saturday. And of course, Saturday is the big UConn championship parade. That's going to end with a rally right here in front of the XL Center. Plenty for businesses here in downtown to get excited about. Sports bring people together, and this week they'll be bringing them to the capital city. We're just happy to have people down here and see it busy again. Hartford is preparing for a busy few days. The Yard Goats are back, playing three consecutive days at Duncan Park, starting with Thursday's home opener. Friday night, the Battle of Connecticut as the Hartford Wolfpack played the Bridgeport Sound Tigers for the final time in the regular season. And on Saturday, the state will celebrate the UConn men's basketball team's championship win with a victory parade. We can't wait to welcome our national champions and also uh, everybody from around Connecticut to come and celebrate. And people really are expected from all over the state. The streets are going to be packed. I mean, UConn to the state of Connecticut is their pro sport. So when there's a championship, the whole state celebrates. A boost in business is great news for those downtown. Dante Boffi, one of the dads of Four Dads Pub, says March really was madness for them in the best way possible. It's been awesome, um, especially in nights of UConn games, whether they're in the XL or playing a Gamble or playing away, the place is packed. This weekend is expected to be no different. The phone's been off the hook with people asking when we're opening, you know, are there UConn specials? Can we camp out there by the window? So we expect a, a fun Saturday for sure. Capital Spirits on Pratt Street is also getting ready for big crowds. It's huge support from everyone from like the city, all the other businesses, um, all of our reps coming in today to see how they can help us during the parade. So it's a really big deal. It's exciting. They'll be showing their Husky pride too. Uh, two roads makes two con beer, so we'll have some uh, beer specials featuring that beer for the day. And again, all of the fun starts tomorrow. There is going to be a party on Pratt Street ahead of that Yard Goats home opener. That's going to be happening from 4 to 6.30. Live in Hartford, Gabby Molina, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And hopefully some more warmer temperatures out there. Gabby, thank you so much. Well, Fox 61 is a proud partner of UConn Athletics. We hope you'll join us to congratulate the national champion UConn Huskies this Saturday morning for their championship celebration through downtown Hartford. Tune in Saturday at 1130 a.m. on Fox 61 and streaming live on fox61.com, the Fox 61 app, and Fox 61 Plus. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank for a first check of the forecast tonight. Bit of a drizzly, misty, raw night out there. Mm. Hi, Rach. Great words to describe it out there, and these pictures kind of tell the story. You can see some raindrops on the camera lens, low visibility. This is New Haven in here, but we've got some areas of fog and mist, and that's how it will be heading into tomorrow morning. But by afternoon, clouds will break for sun, and temperatures are getting off to the races. 45 right now in the Hartford area, low 40s in Wyndham, and there's a little bit of a breeze in some areas. It's not too bad right now though and here's a look at the radar showing some of those light showers and in some cases you're seeing some mist or drizzle that's not showing up on the radar because it is so low to the ground that moisture that the radar is just heading whoop, right over it we've got showers 
we've got sleet and freezing rain and snow to the north of us, severe weather to the west of us. Eventually this front will get closer to us tomorrow, but by the time it gets here, it will be in a weakened state. So there is a chance for a scattered shower or a thunderstorm with it. Following that, it will turn cooler again Friday into this upcoming weekend. Temperatures tonight don't move. They are flat and they'll even start to rise again as we head into tomorrow. We're going to begin the day with fog and mist as we head through the afternoon and this will take some time. Clouds will break for sunshine and that's when the temperatures just take off. Look how we go from 64 to 77 in a hurry. Inland temperatures soaring through the 70s at the shoreline. We stay in the 60s, but in the afternoon, especially later in the day and at night, a rising chance for a scattered shower or a thunderstorm. We're going to talk about what that means for the home opener for the yard goats. Your full forecast coming up. All right, Rachel, thank you. New video at 10 tonight shows the moment police say State Representative Robin Comey flipped her car in downtown Hartford just blocks away from the Capitol. Yeah, State Representative Comey was arrested and charged with DUI after that crash. Fox 61's Jake Garcia has been looking through the video since we got it from Hartford Police this evening. He joins us now to explain what's on it. Jake. Well, Ben, Jen, this new video from a city surveillance camera shows the moments when police say State Representative Robin Comey flipped her car while driving along Capitol Avenue. New video showing the moment police say State Representative Robin Comey hits a parked car along Capitol Avenue in Hartford, causing her to flip over and causing another driver to swerve out of the way. Just seconds before, people can be seen walking along the sidewalk on Capitol Avenue before the crash. The video also showing bystanders rushing to help. Comey was later arrested and charged with DUI. Police body camera video showing Comey dazed and confused after the crash. All happening just blocks from the state house where Comey had been in committee hearings until 4.30 that afternoon. The crash happening just before 7 o'clock. A police report says Comey had been at a restaurant prior to the crash, but she could not recall where she was. Fox 61 was the only TV station on scene as police gave her multiple field sobriety tests, which police say she failed. Police body camera footage also shows the state representative from Branford joking about changing DUI laws. Doesn't make any sense, but we'll have to change that. Yeah, take it. <laughs> <laughs> Take a deep breath in. And two days after the crash, Comey released a statement of apology saying she was seeking treatment. Comey is scheduled to go before a judge in Hartford Superior Court next month. In studio, Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Jake, thank you very much. And new at 10, Vernon police are looking for a suspect who they say robbed a bank this afternoon. Officers were called to the Key Bank on Route 30 just after 1 p.m. We're told the suspect got away before police arrived. No injuries were reported. Anyone with information about the robbery should call Vernon police. The family of a five-year-old Connecticut boy who died after suddenly collapsing during recess held a silent demonstration in his honor. A year ago today, Romeo Pierre Lewis collapsed at the Charter Oak International Academy in West Hartford. His family says school staff ignored him. Other students who notified the teachers that fell down, the family announced that it's filing a wrongful death lawsuit. I know you'll be very pleased right now if we put all together, raise our voice, and say the Lord's Prayer, because that was his favorite prayer. According to the lawsuit, teachers ignored the five-year-old for 10 minutes before checking on him and then calling 911. The family is suing the town and West Hartford School Board for recklessness and negligent training of staff members. Tonight, Meriden police have identified a woman who they say drove away after hitting another woman with her car. That crash happened on B Street late last night. Police say the woman was talking to a friend parked in front of her home when she was hit. A witness to the crash followed the suspect home and told police where that person lived. Police impounded the car and identified the driver. The case is still being investigated. The woman who was hit is in critical condition tonight. A man found guilty of a deadly stabbing in Manchester sentenced to 35 years in prison. Gary Ramsey was convicted of killing Robert Callahan in 2021. Police say that Ramsey was looking for an acquaintance when he was forced his way into a home and killed Callahan. Well, Connecticut is getting $56 million to upgrade air filtration systems in public schools across the state. That money will go toward new HVAC systems with the goal of improving the health of students and teachers. Asthma is the leading cause of why children in the U.S. miss school, and three out of every 20 Connecticut children have asthma. Children breathe air in schools all day long. It is our responsibility as a society 
to take care of them. For an older state, there's a lot of uh, what you have to do to take care of people, upgrade what you got, and make sure this is a place where people want to be. Well, the first round of money comes from the Indoor Air Quality Grants Program for Public Schools, which Governor Ned Lamont created last year. In total, $150 million in that program. We have much